Well, good morning, Southern Oregon, and welcome to The Real Estate Show. I'm Alice Lima. I'm here with Pete Belcastro. We're both brokers at John L. Scott here in Southern Oregon, and uh, we're having a very interesting recap of the first month of 2021 here in Southern Oregon. Our real estate sales are just still going through the roof, still a low inventory situation. Pete, uh, why don't you bring us up to speed on what your week was like? Well, you know, uh, uh, we're in that, um, the end of January is is the end of, of the starting of the winter selling cycle that we, we've always talked about the six selling cycles during the course of the year. And you know, winter is the low end of that. And it begins to change really after January, once we get to February, we see more listings. And I think that's probably really what our show is about today, Alice, because we really have, I don't wanna say crisis, mode yet but i'm telling you in in our years of doing this we are we always talk about historic highs and historic lows we are at this historic low in inventory that we've never seen before you know in on in all three counties and as we get into the spring season where we're we're, we're expecting to see lots of listings the big question is is that going to happen and quite frankly, until the COVID world changes, Alice, I don't know if that is going to happen in a normal, in what would be a normal cycle of winter to spring. Yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see. I still strongly campaign that there is a tsunami of listings coming. People waited too long last year. Um, now that the election's behind us, interest rates are sort of going to be stable for a while. I think we're going to see a lot of people put their house on the market between, I love making predictions, so I'm going to say between February and July, I think well, we're going to have a huge supply and a balanced it. market. Well, I, I, I tell you, um, I hope you're right. I've told you this many times, but you But I've been, been wrong for three months, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really do think that uh, we're in that mode. And, and what it really means is for certain situations for buyers and sellers, today we want to talk to you about that. How do you get ready for this? Because this market is not like anything I've seen in my 13 years, and I know you haven't either, and neither have buyers and sellers. And how do we maneuver? How do we get around this? Because when you go out there, and again, I'll give you the stats in the, in the next segment here again, it hasn't really improved uh, our situation. And so uh, it's real tough sometimes, for, especially for buyers. How do you get a house? And for sellers, you know, uh, maybe they're not going to list for a while still. I don't know. We're going to find out, though, as you say, in the coming, I say, when we talk at the end of February, we're going to know. So stay tuned. We're going to have a quick break from one of our sponsors. We're brought to you by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors and uh, Mutual of Omaha Mortgage and John L. Scott. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. We're both real estate brokers here at John L. Scott in Southern Oregon, and it is the end of our first month of 2021. Here we are at the end of January. Ridiculously low supply. I think we're really down to about a week, week and a half, aren't we, Pete, of inventory for residential? Oh, yeah. In, in some, well, again, in some categories and price categories, there's a week, <laughs> a week supply of inventory. Look, if you're looking for something in the 250,000 to $350,000 range. I mean, there, there, I mean, there's just not much out there. I mean, just to show you, Alice, how I mean, that we just don't make this, these numbers up. You know, we've been following the, just the stick built homes in Jackson County, the listings every, every week we've been doing this for years and years. So we, we follow the same stats, the same information week after week. Jackson County now has 210 listings for stick built homes in the entire county. East Medford used to have more than that by itself. So you can see what that's done. But what we're really seeing is that the market divides at $500,000. Of the 210 listings, Alice, 106, I'm sorry, 114 of 210 are $500,000 or above. And if you go 350,000 and above, it's 160 out of 210. So wow. just in Jackson County, there are 50, five zero, stick built homes, frame built homes available priced for 350,000 and less. That's across Medford, 
Ashland, Central Point, Eagle Point, Rogue River, White City, that is very, very little to choose from for a, buy, for a buyer right now. And, you know, I think it slows down the sellers too, because people do want to make a change in their life. They've been cooped up for a year, <laughs> basically, and they, they are ready to start making changes. And now that a lot of the dust is settled with the economy, we have some predictability with the vaccine. Um, I think we're going to see the floodgates open. We just need a few people to get their places on the market, maybe next month or in March. And then I think uh, listings will beget listings and these enormous rise in appreciation. You know, Pete, we talk about this $30,000 up in some cases, $100,000 up just since March. People have so much more equity. We want to talk later how you don't want to count on that continuing. That's not a sustainable increase over the years. Well, in Oregon in 2020, we had overall an average of $23,000 per household gain in equity. That, that's an average. 23000 in the state of Oregon. So some were more and some were less. Wow. And, and we were above the national average, which was 17000 So you are right. There is, there is a lot of money out there. We have tons and tons of buyers who are all approved because they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. But here's the question I've got for you, though. You talk about listings. Look, if I'm going to list my house, if I'm thinking about listing my house, say, in the, in March, why wouldn't I do it now? There's, there's no, I have no competition right now. Yeah, but and that would be my recommendation, um, because if I'm right, then you're going to have a lot of competition, and that's going to have an effect on the price that you get, and it's going to have an effect on how much stuff you have to do to your house to get it ready. So right mm -hmm. now, I think sellers could get cut a pass, uh, a pretty easy one, if they could get their house on the market in the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. I have I have like five homes in escrow right now, Alice, and all, yeah, sorry, and all five of them, they were full price offers, every one of them. So sellers who are, if you're, what you're saying, if you're sitting on the fence, and say, I'll do it in April or May. I mean, you're going to have more competition, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, right now is the time to actually list it because we're so low. This is just just how, how low are we? I mean, this is just remarkable to me. How low are we? How low are we? <laughs> well, Josephine County, okay, is only 85 residences, again, frame built homes for sale in all of Josephine County. And 30 of those are priced at 500000 and above, leaving Again, 50 homes below that price range. In Klamath County, it's 108 uh, uh, listings of frame-built homes, 108. Um, last week, Alice, was a really big pending week. Um, we, had, we had almost record, record pendings in all three counties last week. There was a 70 in Jackson County, 34 in Josephine, 38 in Klamath County. That's a lot. Uh, that for, is a lot. So last week was a big pending week, and what it did, it even took more listings out of the out of out of the total. So we continue to be just holding our own, but falling a little bit. It seems like each week, and the prices. Listen to these prices. Are you ready for this? We talk about. I'm ready. Going <laughs> average price in Jackson County last week for 44 closed sales. Was four hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars. Four seven eight four hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars. Wow. In Josephine County, on 20, 20 solds, the average price was four hundred and twenty seven, and fourteen solds in Klamath, the average price was two sixty three, which is r r roughly their average there. But you can see, sellers are getting literally one hundred percent of their asking price again. If the house is in good condition, it's got to be moving ready, things like that. So, you know, that's really what the market is doing. And we've never seen it before. But I, I, as you say, if someone's sitting around waiting, um, it's, it's I mean, I don't have a place. To, I wish I had a place to sell, Alice. I, I, I put a if I, I do it right now. And there's well, someone looking. Yeah. And it's interesting because one of the. Uh, markets that's really, really hot right now are the duplex to fourplex, uh, which we call multifamily. <clears throat> and you can have a multifamily that's more than four, but then you have to get a commercial grade mortgage. But um, the two, three, and four unit uh, multifamilies have a ton of appreciation. You know, a year ago, 
18 months ago, you could buy one of those for maybe what we call a hundred thousand a door. So a, a fourplex would be 400, a duplex would be two, that kind of thing. Well, now people are fighting over $150,000 a door, $200,000 a door, and they're getting it. So all of a sudden, a lot of my uh, big portfolio investors are starting to think of selling, which they never in a million years would have had that idea. But there's so much profit right now. Everybody's kind of sitting back, getting ready for taxes, and they're starting to run their numbers. And some of the residential owners are doing that as well because they have so much profit just in nine, 10 months, but then they get slowed down because they don't know where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. Well, we're increasing. And this is the danger that we have in a market like this. And the West coast is really uh, indicative of it. You know, we're, we're increasing in equity by double digits, which is an unsustainable amount. Exactly. And, and, and that's our big concern. We went up by 13%. I mean, in, in January, it was double digits even as well. So I think we're, we know we, we have to realize that, that that's an, uns, an unsustainable thing to do because what it does, it makes the affordability issue come back again before us and it prices out then so many people, even with the low interest rates, you can't do it. Look, if you want if you, if you're, if you're looking for a house at $500,000 and above, you've got a great amount of, I say great amount, but you've got a lot of choice out there. There's a lot of choice, five, 600,000, 700,000, 800. Look at the million dollar properties. I think there's like 36 of them in Jackson County. And more coming. Are, more and more coming. million dollar properties coming. You know, well, I don't know who's buying those or what they're doing. And they may sit a while, but they also skewer the whole numbers and all the statistics, you know, that we do. But look, 500,000 above, you've got a lot, you've got a lot to choose from. But below that, that's really where most of us are at. And that's where the real shortages and in, in the issues are. And, um, you know, look, in, in trying to solve this, I thought still the best thing that we've heard of all, all year was the city of Medford's ADU uh, program that they've got where they're waiving the systems development charges. They're waiving, they have uh, pre-made, pre-done architectural design plans that people could get, save you 10 grand. But you also get what you talked about as an additional dwelling unit and how important they are. And I think in the future for, for homeowners to have an additional dwelling unit is going to be a huge advantage in terms of the equity and the value that you place on your property going forward by having an additional dwelling unit on it. You talk about multifamily, same thing. Yeah, and I think you really touched on something key there, Pete, that I don't know that a lot of our listening audience has thought about is Yes, the vaccine is here. Yes, the corona may have an end to its cycle. Yes, we will have a new beginning. But if I'm hearing the scuttlebutt correctly from people, there's a lot of things that are not going to change. And this idea of being a little more self-sustaining, having a little better yard, having a little more of a garden, having a couple of chickens, this is becoming more important and more uh, more mainstream, having an extra cottage or two on your property in case this happens again, or in case you decide you're not going to go back into your office, your school, your whatever, fill in the blank, um, yeah. then you're going to need, you're going to need that space. And so the, the most appreciation we saw in Southern Oregon, the last nine months was in our rural properties or just on the outskirts of town that still had good internet just for that reason so that people could still do their homeschool do work from home and have a little bit more elbow room and so i think having extra cottages on your property is going to be really key not just to have rental income but just so that your own family can expand if this uh pandemic situation happens again mm -hmm. absolutely and i think as we keep, you know, as we keep moving forward, we're going to experience these different, uh, you know, changes and challenges uh, in, our, in our own industry. And, and gosh, you know, I don't know where it's going to go, uh, but, you know, you talked about waves and in, in, about the rural properties. I just want to, you know, we have a break coming up here, but I think rural properties, the next big wave is, a pot, is coming now. You try to find one or two acres, below five acres in, in Jackson. There are, there are none there. Josephine, even in Klamath County, there aren't any. You can buy cheap land with no with no utilities, things like that. But as far as places, rural properties right now, Alice, they're just not out there. This this heart is just nothing. 
And when it comes up, once one comes on, as we have noticed, it's going to get multiple offers. If it's anywhere, you know, decent property, I've even sold places that people are willing to take them on to rehab them and refinish them, refurbish them because they want the property, even though the house or something that might be a manufactured home or whatever, are not in the best condition. They don't care. They want out and they want here. They're not coming necessarily because of the political climates. They're coming because people aren't very nice where they live, the traffic <laughs> out, and the affordability. The affordability, affordability. yeah. It's a big thing for so many people retiring. It's just- And for- lifestyle, and lifestyle. And safety is definitely on people's minds. They talk about it a lot. Um, they like to have some elbow room with their yard. They also want to have, you know, a few fruit trees and things like that. And these are people that never thought they would leave the city. So, um, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, change that we're undergoing here in Southern Oregon. And uh, Pete and I will be back after a quick uh, note from our sponsors. We're very lucky to be brought to you today by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, John L. Scott here in uh, Ashland and Medford, and also Mutual of Omaha Mortgage Guy Giles. Uh, They all contribute so that we can bring you this educational radio show every single week. So Pete and I take our hats off to them and say, thank you so much. And we will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Well, welcome back to the real estate show folks. I'm Alice Lima here with my coworker, Pete Bell Castro. We're both brokers at John L. Scott here in Southern Oregon. And it's very interesting. Some of the uh, ebbs and flows we've had in our real property. We were talking right before the break, Pete, um, not only about the appreciation, but uh, some of the emotional motivation that's bringing people to Southern Oregon from places afar. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think the, the rural Oregon, rural Idaho and Eastern Washington right now, I think are the areas that are really under tremendous pressure from people looking. I mean, I've had clients who have started driving up from California, stopped in Southern Oregon on their way to Washington, gonna make a circle, come back through Idaho. So that's happening and it's happening a lot more than you think. It's remarkable to me. But try to find a place out in the rural areas right now in, in acreage, and and they're they're just <laughs> there's just not very much out there. Again, if you want to go in the high price ranges, yes, there are, but for what most of us can afford, there aren't out there, and so it's really putting pressure on rural properties and rural people. You know, um, uh, they like to be left alone. You know, and <laughs> especially <bother>. Southern Oregonians. <laughs> <laughs> tried to driving out east of Klamath out towards Bonanza or Bly, and there are literally hundreds and hundreds of homes and not a one for sale. Just remarkable, and you, even in town. So again, we're really hitting that, hitting that note. Alice, I do want to bring one thing up. You know, we have a lot of uh, landlords, you know, investors. You do, you're, you do this. The state of Oregon, you know, canceled a meeting this week, and I haven't heard what occurred from it. But they were planning to have this meeting. It was a big webinar that landlords and people could could participate in, which was bringing out the the COVID response, you know, for landlords. In other words, you would get 80% of your your rent back if someone was affected by by the rent. You had to donate, basically give 20% back to keep 80, that they would pay you 80%. The state would. This is 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 how crazy all this is. That meeting got canceled. And I know a lot... Some um, uh, landlords that I know were, were disappointed. We had talked about they wanted to, to attend this. Property managers wanted to, wanted to see what was going on here because this is how they're going to pay, again, $3. I don't know, I wouldn't call them $3, but if you're a landlord, you may want to pay attention to this because you'll be able to at least retrieve 80% of the, of the lost revenue if you have sustained that because of COVID. So you got to give 20%, you got to you got to donate 20% or give it up, but you get 80. Would you do that? What are your thoughts on that? So so I've got two two comments. One is just the rental market is so tight in Southern Oregon, even before the COVID. Um, and then when this um, this idea of you didn't have to pay your rent uh, during the COVID came up, most of the tenant population I am in touch with and my investors are in touch with, they're all paying their rent because they understood that even if 
you had a situation, if you talk to your landlord, you could probably work it out. And, and for those that were just not paying their rent for no reason, it's going to add up. You're going to get caught. It's going to go on your record. It's going to be hard to rent again later. So um, I'd be curious if there's any landlords out there that have people that are not paying because all the landlord population I'm dealing with, all the tenants I deal with, I don't know that we have hardly any that are not paying their rent. And the, and if there was one or two, they had a letter from their employer and it was very temporary. And we got them, we got the rent adjusted on a temporary basis with their landlord. So, but to answer your question, um, you know, I don't, I think if you're hurting, if you're a landlord and you are really, really struggling and it makes the difference between making your mortgage payment and not, then yes, you should take the money. Absolutely. Uh, most landlords are pretty businesslike. They have savings accounts. They have, um, they have some kind of a, a plan B, you know, in case they have vacancies or they have tenants that don't pay or they have huge damage. So, you know, a lot of us have that kind of covered on the side, not for a year, but at least we have something. So I'd be curious to hear from any of the landlords out there if they have tenants that they're struggling with. Well, they're, they're, I have heard some and I know some now where we're trying to also sell a house with a tenant who couldn't pay the rent in, in, in over, over here. And so they definitely, you know, lower income people, restaurant workers, I mean, so many who have been so suffering by this have really struggled. It's probably a bigger issue, you know, in the cities of Portland area. In, yeah, in I Mexico would say, I would say area. that's probably true. Yeah, yeah. then it's down here because if you're working and you want to keep paying your rent, absolutely. But if you're laid off and you're in trouble, you know, this is at least a lifeline that is out there. And mm -hmm. I just don't want or just to just stuff it off and say, well, I don't want to do it because, you know, go through the process. We don't know. We don't have much information yet on how it's going to work. You are any. Think, <laughs> uh, you know, where's the money coming from or how, you know, how they're going to yeah, work. Who's paying all that, Pete? Where's all that money coming from? Government free money. This is what, this is what, uh, this is what the stimulus packages are all about. Uh -huh. well, we're going to make, landlords we're going to sustain you because if your if your tenants can't pay we'll pay 80 percent of it for you well how long does that last how many months do you get with that it's just it's, it's mind-boggling how much money is is being spent uh if is, is, is it being spent wisely that's a good question back to real estate though you know we know that that's still the great investment and as you say you know we have a new president now in there you've always said you know it doesn't matter if you're democrats or republicans in the white house people are going to sell houses. And that hasn't had any effect at all, Alice, since uh, since we changed administration. Interest rates are still hovering, you know, 2.5, you know, below to even a little bit below that. That hasn't changed. The feds haven't raised interest rates there. So so that part of our market is going to looks like it's going to be solid and going to continue, uh, even with the change uh, in administrations, which it should, and which is a normal way that we do business in this country. Yeah, and one of the interesting things I noticed this week was the stock market volatility. Um, and, and this is a real estate show, but the stock market volatility sometimes affects our market, not only here in Southern Oregon, but other places. And if people are selling off some of their stocks, one of the places they like to put money is real estate because it's considered more stable and safer. So uh, when we saw all that up and down, those big swings this week, I kind of started wondering if we're going to have even more buyers. <laughs> well, I have a buyer who, who is a day trader during the day. Okay. Oh, see, see. Exactly what he is. But what he did, he said, I had enough money. And he says, I thought I needed to get something tan more tangible than just stocks. And so what did he do? He bought a beautiful new home. So he has, so he's building equity and has that tangible asset and is creating wealth in a different way for him. And just you know stocks and i thought that i said that's exactly what we talk about all the time you know yeah have that that wealth creation that home ownership gives you and i thought that was really interesting because it's tangible and the stocks as you say the volatility they could disappear tomorrow but your house is still going to be standing and it's still going to be worth something mm -hmm. yeah and in uncertain times um i think real estate is comforting to people it's something they can touch like you said it's tangible um, and here in southern oregon even if we have a huge amount of supply come on the market the tsunami of sellers uh, I, we keep calling it this year uh, we don't really see a depression in prices um, i'm saying it's going to be either a very 
small amount of appreciation or a flattening out, which is what we were trying to do last year. This time, remember, we were coming out of a seller's market, peak before the corona hit, and we were starting to flatten out and have a more even market. I'm thinking that's kind of what we're going to get back to, which was just picking up where we left off last year. So I don't see the prices going down a ton. Um, so, But the people that are leaving uh, the stock market and going into real estate, they're going to find that it's really, really competitive. It's You can't just click a button and say, I want that. <laughs> And I know we got a break again, and maybe the next time we can talk about how you get ready to, to, to maneuver in here, especially for buyers, especially for buyers, because uh, there's not a shortage of buyers by any means. We call it the backlog of buyers, backlog of sellers, whatever you want to call it. They're out there. And, and what would happen if we if this if unless we get more listings, as you say, we're going to run out of properties to sell and the whole thing's going to come to a halt. Is that possible at that end of the spectrum? Could we be to where? you look looking at 250,000 and there's nothing there. That's right. Uh, when everybody and their dog puts their house on the market and they okay. all do it at the same time. Or what if, <laughs> okay. And what if lenders are lending all or pre-approving all these people to, to buy and there's nothing to buy. Yeah. I have gotten one appreciation, I think over the last, at least the last few years is the real shortage we have of contractors and, and people to do the trades and construction you know, it really hampers. We could build so many more properties and duplexes and things like that, but we just don't have the builders here, the contractors here, the the the, the subcontractors. It, try to call one. I mean, you, you you're weeks out. You're weeks out sometimes. So, we really you know Brad Bennington of the Home Builders has been talking about that for years and years, and you really do see it now. When we really need it, they aren't there, and so we can't ever get ahead. It seems like because it's just. We would go from one to the other and they're busy, but there's not enough and we're not getting enough built. And well, that's sure where, would they, where would they build? Um, you know, the, the buildable lots are kind of dwindling and the ones that are out there <laughs> right now that I've been looking at, you know, it's going to cost so much money to uh, to do the development, even with the city of Medford feeling generous about their system development fees in some circumstances. I, I think that's just a real roadblock. And, um, you know, we talked about that. I think there were, I think, I think Joe Brett told us the other day, because he goes to those planning commission meetings in Medford, there were like seven planning actions. I mean, there there's being, there's, there's places being developed more so than there are being able to be built upon. I think that's the problem. There's lots out there. There's nobody to build you, build for you. Try calling a contractor today, Alice, in any county. Yeah, How it's two, two levels you? of problems. <laughs> they're going to tell you they can't get to you probably until the year 2022. Seriously. Yeah, yeah the fire victims tell me that they, uh, they cannot even get somebody to help them. And they're sitting there with their insurance checks in their hand. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if somebody wanted to start uh, doing more construction. We definitely have jobs for them. And there's plenty of remodel jobs too. There's people that would love to just remodel the house they have and not move and they would be right. quite comfortable. You can't find anybody to do the work. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, try to get somebody to come in and do that for you. So we really have an issue. It was what part of the solution we heard from uh, Matt Brinkley from the city of Medford a couple of weeks ago was out of town. Uh, our builders are going to be coming or they're already here. You know, we're seeing that more. Maybe there's more opportunity here in our communities in the rural areas than there are in the suburbs maybe now. Who knows? We're gonna, we'll find that out, I think, in the coming weeks ahead or months ahead, but um, lots are out there. There's just, it's just so slow to get somebody out there to build, and that is really slowing the process down for everybody. It's, a, it's, it's really hard. You have to plan way ahead now for this stuff. And price, oh, building materials are, are not cheap either because of the demand, because of the fires and all the kinds of things that we're seeing. So there, there's so many stumbling blocks, it seems like, ahead for so many things that we talk about, but you have to just plan ahead and you can get through it and make it successful by planning ahead and, 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 and being smart about it and not reacting as so many people do. Yeah, it'll be interesting in the next 12 months to watch not only how the supply side of uh, real estate irons out here in Southern Oregon, but also what happens if we start getting more of our contractors back, getting their attention, because some of the firework is winding down. So um, Pete and Alice will be right back. Uh, this is The Real Estate Show brought to you by 
Mutual of Omaha Mortgage, Guy Giles, John L. Scott, and the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. Do not touch that dial. Well, welcome back to the Real Estate Show. Folks, I'm Alice Lima here with Pete Bell Castro. We're having a really interesting conversation about the inventory, lack of inventory, and some of the other national elements that are affecting our real estate here in Southern Oregon. And one of the interesting things that we were talking about during the break, Pete and I, was the unemployment factor. If people are getting a lot of unemployment, is that possibly why we don't have as much labor in the construction department? Or did they maybe go somewhere else? Well, when 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 the, when the Great Recession came in 2008, Southern Oregon saw a lot of those um, jobs disappear and people left. And they went really into the metropolitan areas because there was more work there. Because we, we you know, const- look, cons- we didn't build a new, we didn't, almost didn't build any new construction in Southern Oregon for several years. Uh, and we're and we're, we we always say we're going to pay the price for that later on, and we're and we're seeing what that is like today. But um, you know, we we with materials the way they are, and, and, and I'm hoping Road Community College has been promising to do you know uh, uh, classes in, in these kinds of in the trades. So hopefully, electricians, plumbers, you name it, those are great paying jobs, and boy, the demand is there. And um, and you can see, it. I actually here, here here's a difference, Alice. I I had a guy come to my farm getting some new uh, garage doors, okay? And he said he moved, he moved there from Seattle. He said in Seattle, he had, he, he'd go to a job, there'd be 50 people, 50 different businesses vying for the same job. He came down to Southern Oregon, he says, and he's got so much business, he can't even handle it because wow. there's only two of them doing it. Wow. It's, there, there's opportunities that are really out there for so many people and so many uh, trades. We just gotta be you know, smart enough to take advantage of it. And uh, for young people, boy, uh, I've never seen seen quite that way. We need shop classes back in schools and things like that to really get us out of this because um, you can you can literally again try to find somebody to work. You're, it's just going to take you a very 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 long time. You got to get on their schedules, and maybe you're months and months out. I'm months out getting the carport. I can't get th- <laughs> just remarkable the amount of business going on around us. Uh, that's that's affecting real estate that we don't even see this taking place. Yeah, and uh, you know it's interesting is that you can get on somebody's schedule and then they they forget about you. That's happened uh, a couple of times uh, because so many of the buildings that people are having to buy now, especially in rural properties, they're not move-in ready, and so part of the transaction has to include getting bids and schedules and stuff like that. And uh, I just recently had a situation where somebody uh, a trade came out spent four hours bidding the job and then completely lost the bid, forgot all about us. And it was a huge, huge job. I mean, that's how much work there is for people that they'll lose their bid. So if you're out of listening, yeah, like you said, if you're a student or maybe you're out of work and you need to switch gears, please consider one of the trades. Well, and I think buyers and sellers need to also realize, take off from that, is that if you need to have a repair addendum, so you need to have some work done on the property before it closes, that's, that's where happen. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna have to, again, get on someone's schedule. You gotta keep following up with them. And it may extend closing because a lot of times you can't find anybody to do it. They're just so busy. And again, uh, if you call someone one time, put it on a schedule, you don't call them back again, you're never gonna hear from it. You have to be proactive. And continue to call, continue to say, I need this work done. Can you make sure I'm on your schedule? You know, that kind of thing. And uh, again, you can be successful, but you, if you have to be persistent because these, again, because of the conditions is supply and demand, just like in housing, supply and demand in the trades that we're seeing uh, all, all three counties, I mean, everybody's in the same boat. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really interesting. So be aware, you may have to extend closing a little bit to cover that. If or you make have a- some other arrangement or make some other arrangements. Yeah, yeah. so this is, if you're thinking of selling, then I think we agree we have two or three pieces of advice for you. One is do it now and not in March or April if you can't, because you're gonna have a much better selling environment and a lot more hungry buyers and less fussy buyers. Um, If you do have things that you need to have done to your house before you put it on the market, then you better get going now because you could be 30, 45 days out just to get a tradesperson to actually show up, do the work, 
uh, and finish the job because sometimes those are multi-day jobs and they don't come back right away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly, if you're going to put your house on the market, you have to price it properly. Yes, we just had this huge run up, right? $30,000, $100,000 over last year, but that's not sustainable. Please do not call your agent and say, add an extra hundred thousand. <laughs> no, do not do that because the market is what the market is. And I think we're really going to level off here. So uh, sellers just need to be aware of what the comps are before they list. Well, you're, gonna, you're absolutely right. If you're looking at a $250,000 house versus a $500,000 house are going to be different. So you're right. You have to be, be, be aware of that and be, and be ready. Uh, you know, lenders are out there with their pre-approvals and, and buyers are out there. They're looking we're in multiple offer situations. Boy, I'm in that as you are in, in certain price ranges, not again, not in the 500,000 and above generally. You're pretty, you're pretty free there. But if you're below that, you, you have to suspect or expect that you're gonna go up against multiple offers and be ready and you can win them. You can win them if you are ready and you have all of your ducks in a row and, and, and are standing there and willing maybe to Alice to go a few thousand dollars higher, you know, to go above it, uh, to have a chance of winning. Because if this is the place you want, and it's really the, the house that you find, and if you lose it, boy, the next one may be, you know, who knows how far down the road until you find it again. Uh, it, it, you know, so uh, you got to be ready to go. That's my b- big advice to everybody is have all the ducks, have all the documents ready to when you submit the offer to the seller, the seller is going to look at your offer and say, this is the best offer. This is the one I want. Otherwise, they toss them aside and you're going to be lost and, and you won't get it for your client. And your clients will be very upset because that's the house they wanted. And it's not uh, just about price. I mean, price, of course, carries a lot of weight, but there's a lot of other things you can throw in, like you'll clean out the garage. Um, you will let them take down their chain link fence or whatever it is that would make the seller's life more enjoyable. Give them more time, uh, close early. There's, there's all kinds of things you can do that will help, um, help your case to, to be the buyer that wins the bid. But we have multiple offers all the way up into the $470,000 range. And the houses are not necessarily move in ready or in good repair. So, um, but having said all that, I still think it's a great time to buy something. The interest rates are so low. It's it's such an interesting time. I would still encourage people if they do want to make a purchase to go for it. You just got to be ready. Yeah. And when they find that property, I'm telling you, in this market, uh, the, the buyers who are ready, they are thrilled beyond belief because they've been able to overcome all these obstacles and got what they wanted. And so uh, it's an amazing market. Again, we're at that beginning of the spring selling season coming up in February. Alice says, would you say tsunami of listings? I'm holding you to that. Tsunami of sellers. But we're going to see uh, how it goes. <laughs> we'll see if I'm right. I don't know. Or, I think so, but we'll okay. see. Or it's either going to be that or people are going to stay put still until the COVID is more down the road. We'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, see, I think there's so much appreciation in people's properties right now. I think they're going to do it. They're just got to be sure they have a place to go. Okay. We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. Have a good week. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Pete and Alice will be back next week. Bye now.